This module gives you some vocabulary to help you think about writing and research in your major. Since this class is all about developing strategies for writing and research, we should start with defining what exactly a strategy is in this context. First, we should start off by talking about what academic writing really means. You've probably heard those words before in previous classes, but for this course in particular, academic writing is how professional scholars communicate with each other. It's how knowledge is created, spread, and debated among professionals in different fields. Every field that's represented in the university has its own kind of academic writing. How a history professor writes about history, and how a social work professor writes about history, might be very different, but some fundamental rules apply in both cases. We'll be breaking down those rules this semester. So how does that apply to you? You are inventing academic writing each time you sit down to an essay assignment. You have to effectively translate your own ideas into a very specific type of writing. We call this process entering a discourse community. The ability to enter a discourse community and participate with it is invaluable for any career you might pursue. All academic writing is argument. Really, every kind of writing is making an argument if you really think about it. Here are some different types of argument that academic writing might engage in. 1. Define a situation that calls for response. This type of writing explains a problem, gives context for its origins, and reviews the current state of the problem. We call this problematizing. 2. Demonstrate the timeliness of an argument. In this kind of writing, the goal is to make an audience realize how important something is. Oftentimes, this is a part of problematizing. 3. Establish a personal investment. In some fields, this kind of argument is discouraged. In others, though, the author's personal stake in the issue is relevant and contributes to his or her credibility. 4. Appeals to readers whose minds you want to change. The goal of lots of arguments is to change existing ideas. Part of doing that means breaking down what an audience thinks is important and why. 5. Supporting another argument with reasons. Some academic writing exists to support or underscore existing academic writing. Finally, 6. Anticipate and address readers' reasons for disagreement. This can sometimes take the form of a refutation or a response piece. So, how do you start writing like this? You have to develop habits of mind. What is a habit of mind? Basically, it's a pattern of thought that leads you to question assumptions and opinions, explore alternative opinions, anticipate opposing arguments, compare one type of experience to another, and identify the causes and consequences of ideas and events. Sound familiar? A lot of that language lines up with some of our definitions of academic arguments. This is essentially what it means to participate in an academic discourse community. But you also develop habits of mind for everyday things or processes too. For example, when you're shopping or deciding who to vote for. You have a strategy for doing these things. The next step is to identify that strategy and think about it critically.
That process is called analysis. Basically, analysis is breaking down something into its various parts and reflecting on how the parts work together. The end goal of all of this is the development of a heuristic for academic writing. A heuristic is a method or process of adopting ideas. How can we break down our habits of mind and start defining them as a heuristic? There are three key points. Inquiring, seeking and valuing complexity, and understanding that academic writing is a conversation. What are the steps for inquiry? First, observe, then ask questions, and then examine alternatives. Go to YouTube and look at any political advertisement and follow these three steps for inquiry. How can performing an inquiry help you mount an academic argument about the political ad? When we seek complexity, we have to acknowledge that there are very few binaries in the world. What is binary thinking? Basically, it's thinking in black and white. Right and wrong, good and evil, etc. In academic writing, there really is no such thing. The steps to developing a complex worldview are, first, simple reflection on what you observe. Really take the time to pay attention. You might be surprised how quickly those binaries break down. Then, start to examine issues from different points of view. Identify an issue that is close to your heart and that you feel strongly about. Then, think about how many different opinions there are on the same issue. At that point, you can start developing issue-based questions. We'll call these research questions later on. Finally, it's important to start seeing academic writing as a conversation. It places value on the belief that good, thoughtful ideas come from conversation with others. In order to have a conversation, we have to have empathy, respect, and a willingness to exchange and revise ideas. What are some steps to starting to join this conversation? Be receptive to the ideas of others, even if you disagree with those ideas. In the same vein, be respectful of others especially those with whom you disagree. Engage with ideas you disagree with. Don't just shut them down and ignore them. This will help you be more flexible and make your engagement with different ideas more productive and beneficial to a continuing academic conversation.